You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Life Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let them keep pushing and pushing and pushing God. And the scripture already said, if he don't shorten the time, we no flesh worth saving. People are falling away too fast. There's too much weakness in the church because of the compromised religion. Whenever you have compromised, you got the majority of people. Now, it's amazing how fast God has moved in my life because I went Friday, put in a job application. They was having interviews. I took my, I went to my interview and then they told me to come back at 1 p.m. and I went back and I just thank God for how he just blessed me with that job in one day. And he blessed me and he's going to keep blessing me because I have trust and I have belief in God that he's going to provide for me and I have no worries. I just thank God for just being God. I thank God for all my True Life family for being here, for just taking care of one another. I thank God for just everything. I ask that you pray much in the
share with you tonight. I had a good time in church all day long. And the, the, the thought I want to share again with you is the importance of understanding the individual responsibility in serving God from the context of having a made up mind. Now when your mind is made up and when you understand that there are certain persecutions that will arise because you're in holiness. Yes. Now in the world, uh, trouble is going to come. Yes. But I'm thinking maybe when you get in holiness church, it might be multiplied. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Amen. Uh, praise God. Uh, I often reflect when I was in the world, my goodness looked like everybody liked me. Mm -hmm. I got in holiness, amen, and not too many of my, too many of my relatives will have anything to do with me. Amen. But if Jesus loves me, I can't worry about who don't like me. Try not to get offended when some may seem to shun you. Oftentimes it may be by uh, a coincidence. I don't believe no one in true like church will purposely dislike their brother or their sister. Amen. Now, if they do, they are in urgent need of prayer. Amen. But sometimes it may seem that way because oftentimes you can be carrying so much in your mental capacity till it, it, it multiplies or takes something out of context and out of focus. Amen. But in case you feel that someone don't like you in the church family, mm -hmm. you don't let that take away your joy. Oh, yeah. The persecution that will come against the church has already been prophesied and will happen. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, as I said before, sometimes the persecution, it may come within the church family. But a lot of times you can magnify that by dwelling on things that are not wholesome. Amen. Right. Yes. And when we start thinking more on wholesome things, we don't always look and see something 
negative in a response from a brother or a sister. Amen. Maybe someone forgot to speak to you when you spoke. Yes. Don't worry about that. Amen. I, I, I recall uh, uh, when I, I would go out the door at the church I was in and somebody would be behind me, I would hold the door because I couldn't let the door close in their face. And sometimes it'd be a line. Amen. And you sit there like, oh, she hold the door. <laughs> but you, the very one you let the door close, maybe you're in a hurry, is the very one will say, hmm, I knew that person didn't like me. But you can't go by that, church. Amen. You have to understand that we're in a spiritual, hear me close, we're in a spiritual warfare. We don't wrestle against the necessary flesh and blood, Amen. but we wrestle against principalities and powers in high places. Now these powers can also affect those who are walking in the flesh. Amen. Now we're in the flesh, but we're not of the flesh. Amen. Amen. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We have separated ourselves from worldly activities because we are caught up in the spirit. This is why, as many, Paul says, as many are led by the spirit, they are the sons and daughters of God. If you keep your focus, and what I want to kind of uh, impart to you tonight, keep your focus on spiritual values and not on natural things that you used to uh, think about and used to worry you when you was in the world. You are not in the world any longer. So don't let anything come or anyone come to take away your joy. Because when your joy starts fading, amen, worries can come in. Depressions can come in. Uh, and the next thing you know, you've got a lack of doubt. And we, or rather, lack of faith, because that creates doubt. And whenever doubt creeps in, Holy Ghost eases on out. So let's not entertain negative thoughts. Negative thoughts create negative atmospheres which create a negative response Amen. so again when we focus on spiritual values and hold them uh imminent in our lives then we cannot let someone who may have offended us or may not regardless we ain't gonna let it upset us and spoil our day <laughs> i'm not gonna let you make me unhappy no uh -uh, no <laughs> i got my joy down inside Hallelujah. And let's be aware yeah. of how we want to respond to others as, uh, you know, as you would want someone to respond to you. So, so be, always be aware of saying something positive to a person or about a person. Positive, nothing negative. And always be ready to pray for your brother and sister when you feel that maybe someone might have offended you in some way. Let me get to my text here. In the book of Psalms, I think it's 27th division. And I want you to jump right in verse 2. David is a complex figure in the Bible. There are two complex figures in the Bible, David and Paul. David, I tell you, that man, he was some kind of man. Go away. David knew the law. He knew the words of the prophet. Yet he lusted after a woman so much so that he killed that woman's husband so that he could possess that woman. But it took the prophet to show him his error. Can y'all catch up to that? Amen. Sin can blind you to such a degree you may think you are right, but really you are in an error and it takes someone to point out the error. Now David would have still been in his sin and trespasses had not the prophet of the Lord came to David and told David the uh, use the parable about the lamb, uh, the, 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 uh, the goat. And, and, and this man had one goat and the other man had a whole lot of goats, but the man with a whole lot of goats wanted the one goat that the man had. And, and, and David really got upset because he wanted to know who in his kingdom would be so wicked. Amen. And the prophet said, it's you. Amen. Praise God. Now, did you know he had the power to tell that prophet as Ahab or one of them other hypocrite uh, kings would have done? Go, go, you, you go right quick to the dungeon. Ain't that what they did with Jeremiah? Amen. Amen. But, but, but the prophet spoke with thus saith the Lord. He wasn't worried about whether or not David would like his response or even accept his response, but he spoke with thus saith the Lord. Why? Because David was in an atmosphere 
to be ready to hear something from God. When you adopt your mind to want to hear something from heaven, don't you know something will come to affect you, to uplift you, to uh, motivate, uh, motivate you, and to also uh, create within you a, a response to that which you have heard to kind of lift you up and to correct you. All of us need correction from time to time. Amen. Amen. So when the word came to David, you the one, David immediately sought repentance. And this is what uh, I, I hate about this modern day compromised church. They have voided out repentance. Whenever you void out repentance, brothers and sisters, you take away a person's, uh, uh, you might say, insurance plan for eternal life. Anybody can mess up, but when you tell God you're sorry, and it comes from the inside of you, then God forgives that sin, and he never remembers that sin again. And that's something that's powerful. Amen. He said, I'll cast your sins in the sea of forgetfulness, yes. not to be remembered no more for how long? Ever. Forever. Holy oh, hallelujah. Amen. What a merciful God we serve. Yes. And we have to understand that repentance is not, I'm sorry, to next week. Or next month. Amen. Repentance means I'm sorry and I will not go that direction. I will not do that again. I might do something else down the road, but I'm not going to do that again. And David repented. God heard his prayer. And I want you to understand, God hears your prayer right today. But try not to get yourself in a position where the enemy can use you at his leisure and cause you to cause your sister to be or brother to be unhappy. Because that weight of sin rests on you. So let's not allow the devil to use us in any form or fashion. And if you keep your mind stayed on holy things, the devil will never have an opportunity to use you. Let's learn how to be strong in the faith in God. And let's learn that because we're in holiness and because holiness is the remnant church, the few that have escaped, and we are that few that have escaped, the pollution, the what, of this world. Let's learn how to be proud in that calling God has placed on our lives. And not worry about how come more don't come in. The ones who are going to come in are those who have made up their mind. They are tired of the world, just like we had to make up that same decision. And it was not always easy. I came up in a time when holiness was tough. Amen. There was no baby in saints. Yes. They told you like it was, and you had to stand up and be counted. Yes. Amen. Yes. It wouldn't take your hand out. Oh, hallelujah. I, know, I remember the time I shared with this, but I got to share it again. Yes. We have an men's day program, and this is a true story. Yes. I'm holding an offering basket in front of three or 400 people, and one of the co-chairmen did not like me for some reason, never done nothing to him. Took the basket out of my hand in front of those people because he did not want me to raise the offering. What what is raising offering? Am I, am I going to steal an envelope or something? I mean, I mean, how can I steal in front of all the people? You know, and you take the basket in to uh, whoever's in charge of uh, of the uh, separating the money and, and giving it to the proper people. So uh, he came out and said, "No, you ain't going to raise no offering." And took it out of my hand and give it to someone else. And I went to the pastor. The pastor lived across the street from the church, right down Harriet Street. And uh, I said, Elder such and such, called his name. I ain't going to call his name publicly. Uh, I said, he took the basket right out of my hand. I said, he don't like me. <laughs> and the pastor said, well, just obviously he don't. <laughs> and and I, I believe I started crying and talking about I was going to leave the church. And the pastor looked at me in. After I got a hold of myself, he said, Now, I thought you said God called you to preach. <laughs> and I, all the time I've been worrying, When you gonna let me preach? When you gonna let me preach? Oh, God didn't call me to preach. And this, this worrying him, I, I mean, weeks and months went by. Amen. And he said, I thought God called you to preach. You mean to tell me you're gonna let something, something so insignificant as somebody don't like you and somebody embarrassed you and hurt your feelings, that's gonna cause you to leave the church? I know, Prophet. He said, now you get out of here and you come back tonight and testify. <laughs> I thought he was going to put his arm around me and say, poor little you. Uh-uh. They didn't do it that way. Amen. Sister, praise the Lord, have a short skirt on. Pastor, call it out. Come up here. Drop that skirt down. 
Go back and sit down. Go back and sit down. And come back to night service. Then let that him out the skirt. You can see where she tried to press through with an iron. Amen. Obedient. Didn't run down to the Baptist church Amen. or the false church uh, down the street. Came right back. When you get corrected, you don't think about running to another church because if you're in holiness, ain't nowhere else you can go. And some of you have, may have tried it. Leave your host and go to another church and try to say amen when you know I preach your lying. Right. Listen to that lying devil. And I'm sitting up here saying amen. And praise God. So what do you say? Lord, let me get out of here. <laughs> and I promise you, I, I will not go back. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's learn how to discipline ourselves and understand that we have a responsibility to be corrected and to follow that correction without swerving, without any type of animosity. You, you can't hate the preacher, because if you hate the preacher and he's preaching the word, then that means you hate the word. Amen. And the Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word what? Was God. Lord. Amen. How you gonna hate God? And he's the one who died for your sins and trespasses. It just takes a little bit of forethought. Sometimes you don't always speak quickly. You don't always do things quickly. Sometimes you gotta meditate a little bit. Cause maybe if I say this, it might be taken in, in the wrong context. And then and then you wound the soul. So so sometimes stop and think. And if you feel what you're gonna say, maybe not be in its proper uh, context, then maybe you ought to hold your peace. Don't say nothing. Wait a minute, did, did it get to my, yeah, uh, uh, I'm in the 27th division. Read at the verse two again. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, came they stumbled. Came to eat of my flesh, in other words, came to hurt me. Uh -huh. They stumbled and fell. What did they do? Stumbled and fell. He didn't run to them. Stand still and let God fight you back. Yeah. Yeah. If you think somebody is, 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 is out to hurt you, let God fight you back. Hallelujah. Oh, he will. Oh, yeah. don't you? Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. When I shared about that man this morning, killed himself, a preacher, yeah. Yeah. and they preached him into heaven, mm -hmm. though they ain't got no heaven to send nobody to. Uh, I, I was reminded that one used to follow me over television. Yeah. Young man in his 30s, four kids, wife, school teacher, he got a good job, got a church, seemingly everything's going fine. That man kept coming right behind me and tearing down everything I taught. And I'm teaching right out of the Bible. Now, you know he had to do a lot of twisting and turning. But he was a convincing speaker. The problem with the devil is that he's not a fool. The devil is clever. He knows how to take a scripture and twist it and turn it out of context. Yeah, you can take the Bible and you can make it read once saved, always saved. Because Jesus said, whom I have uh, put in my hand, can't nobody take out. Yes. Yeah, but you got to be careful how you read those scriptures. And if you use line upon line and precept on precept, then you won't get caught out of, out of zinc. You won't be over here in left field, praise the Lord. And amen, and, and the ball is over here, praise the Lord. So you, you got to be careful how you try, and I'm talking to you two so-called preachers, how you try to rightly divide the word of truth. And I've said this, and I'll say it again. Amen. The confusion with Christianity, you got too many preachers preaching, and God has not chosen you. Amen. You got too many divisions in the church, and God ain't never chose division. Amen. God ain't never chose denomination. God ain't never chose the church of God in Christ, church of God, and church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, church of the Nazarene, and Jehovah Witness Church, and all these kind of churches, God ain't never chosen. God had one body, Amen. one body Lord. in Christ Jesus. That one body means one uh, kingdom of God, which means the church of God, Amen. for his own glory. Now, they've got to speak the same thing because Paul instructed the church that you all speak the same thing. Why? To eliminate divisions or denominations. When you speak the same thing, everybody's going to be in one accord. Amen. But because of all of this quasi-religious movement that has come in, you got all this confusion. Now you got sodomites and lesbians actually sitting in a church congregation.
calling themselves saved just like you. No, you ain't saved like me. No. Amen. And you go run and tell the president I said so. Amen. And tell Hillary too. Hallelujah. They are setting this thing up for Hillary to win the next election. And should God spare her and should God tarry, she probably will win that next election. Now you got a woman in power. Yes. And supreme power, uh -oh. earthly supreme power, and then the lesbian influence that has already got hold of her is going to spread more and more. And what they're trying to do, and I hope every family member can hear me, they're trying to spread this thing that I'm talking about the homosexual movement to such a degree to where normal people will be persecuted and ostracized so that the lesbian uh, uh, sodomite movement can come to the forefront and they want everybody to be a sodomite and a lesbian. Amen. What a wicked, wicked generation we live in. And they're going to accomplish their goal if God don't do something about it. But I read somewhere in the scripture, it said, it shall go no further. Oh, yes. Sooner or later, he's going to cut that thing off. Amen. And I, I hope I'm here to see it now. So I can just I, I can just start shouting and dancing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let it pray. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It's gonna happen, church. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Let them keep pushing and pushing and pushing God. And the scripture already said, if you don't shorten the time, be no flesh worth saving. Yeah. People are falling away too fast. There's too much weakness in the church. Because of the compromised religion. Whenever you have compromise, you got the majority of people gravitating to it. Homosexuality, lesbian, sodomite behavior is, has nothing to do with a genetic coding. It has nothing to do with a birth. But when you are around it, and especially young people, young people like to experiment. That's how young people learn how to smoke in high school. Somebody say, oh, here, take a light, take a cigarette. Mm -hmm. I don't smoke. Oh, go ahead, it ain't going to hurt you. And you see other people doing it, next thing you know, you got a cigarette in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Don't taste good. Mm -hmm. I was in, in, in a McDonald's, uh, and a woman was next to me, and she was talking. All of a sudden, she went to that cough. Mm -hmm. Wasn't no cold cough. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at her. I said, mm-hmm. And then keep on smoking. Just keep on. I said to myself, I ain't going to do it. Amen. <laughs> And I, I mean, this cough, one of them, them dry coughs. It ain't like you got a cold or nothing. Amen. And, and I knew, and Lord, it showed me, this woman had been puffing cigarettes since she was a teenager. You know, down here in South Carolina, North Carolina, it looked like everybody smoked. Yeah. Amazing. Everybody put puffing on cigarettes. Yep. Pray, day. <laughs> Can't you read? <laughs> this is hazardous to your health, but you know what? They don't care. No. I'm saying this in this context. You introduce young people to a fad like cigarette smoking or take your drink of beer. Everybody drink beer. Well, I, I, I guess I will. And you take that taste, and it tastes so terrible. Hey Amen. I, I know what I'm saying. I ain't always been saved. Hey Amen. I was in the military service, walk with the buddies. Uh, yeah, have you a. Uh, uh, a Budweiser. Oh, yeah, I believe I will. And uh, you ain't finished yours yet? I said, no, I got a little upset stomach. Uh, but y'all go ahead. Amen. And I started weeding myself away from them. And I started being a lone wolf. Right. I'd, go, I'd go by myself, go to the time I was and have myself a ball. Amen. Just me and Amen. myself. Because I already knew there's something about following people who don't have a moral concept. Now, I was raised up in holding this church. But I wasn't living holy. But I knew there were certain guidelines I followed. I never was a cigarette smoker. Tried to puff on cigars. But I never was a cigarette smoker. Never was a beer drinker. Never was an alcohol drinker. I never was into that. Because I ain't never went in my house and seen no cigarette smoking, no liquor, nothing like that. Amen. Because we were raised up like that. you got to learn how to raise yourself up in an atmosphere of holiness and pass it down to the younger generation so instead of them adopting a custom how to smoke cigarettes how to drink beer how to be a sissy amen how to be a lesbian treat, teach them how to be holy yes. what is wrong with living right 
What is wrong with living morally right? The people don't want that. And I'm trying to explain. They hate the family order. They are trying to pass laws in states where they, where they take away grandmother, grandfather, uncle, and aunt. Did y'all know that? They're trying to take away the word father and mother. Amen. Well, how are you going to take away father and mother who birthed the baby? Come on, come on. Them or those or she or... I mean, goodness sakes, this thing, but this thing is roller coaster so far until it's out of hand. There's no control and no stop to immorality now because they have their foot in the door and they saw nobody was challenging them. There was no one was trying to change them. Everybody was afraid of them. So now they go more and more. Now, again, they got laws passed now where Sodomites and Edmund can adopt a little child. I remember the time when if you was normal to adopt a child, man, they would screen you and re-screen you and re-screen you. And if they they thought that maybe they, they somebody saw you spitting on the sidewalk, you couldn't get no child. Amen. It was strict. I mean strict because they had the interest of the child. Nowadays, they don't have no interest into nothing. Amen. They don't care. As a matter of fact, on the contrary, I think someone told me the other day in England, they took a family uh, uh, who had adopted a child, took the child away from the foster parent because the foster parent was raising the child up not to be uh, uh, sodomites yeah. and lesbians. Mm -hmm. So they took them out because they called that against the, uh, the civil rights yeah. of uh, gay people. There ain't no such thing as a gay person who's a sissy. Amen. A gay person is a Christian who's happy. He, that's what gay means. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now all they got to do is research it for myself, for themselves. Amen. Gay means happy, go lucky, carefree. That's right. Never did mean homosexuality. No. But they've adopted it because they thought that it would catch hold and give a positive influence to something that's filthy, degrading, and nasty. And and there's nothing more that you can describe in uh, uh, sodomite lesbian behavior than filthy, nasty, yes. degrading. Yes. Uh, uncouth, uh, degenerate, yeah. amen, all of those negatives. I mean, Paul in Romans chapter 1, he had seven exposites, yeah. all in the negative, referring to that type of behavior. Yeah. That's why they don't like Paul. Yeah. Amen. Right. amen. Sodomite lesbian, uh, so-called, uh, what do they call it, United Church of Christ. Yeah. Man, they don't like Paul's right. But you say once saved, always saved. And you twist a Romans 10th chapter and use that for your scripture text to prove once saved, always saved. But yet you don't like Paul when he wrote the first chapter of Romans concerning uh -uh. lesbian sodomite behavior. So you're going to take one part that he wrote, but the other part you, you don't like him. <laughs> foolish, foolish, ignorant Galatians. Amen. Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Lord. So again, I thank God for the truth. David gave a teaching, though my enemies came to harm me. Wait, wait a minute, what are you saying, verse 3? Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise now, against me. Now, did you me. catch that part? Though they encamp against me, a host means a multitude yes. of enemies. My heart shall not fear. In other words, I'm going to stay happy. You're not happy if you're fearful. Amen. But if you're not fearful, you got to be happy. Amen. Contentment means happy. That don't mean you're walking around, running around laughing and jumping. But nevertheless, you are at peace yes. in your soul. Amen. David said, though all these enemies come against me, I'm happy. When he challenged Goliath, David was happy. He said, you big devil, you. <laughs> you come with sword and shield against somebody God has sent. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody God has sent. I believe he said, I come in the name of the Lord. Amen. And you come with sword and shield. And you know the rest of the story. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there's no harm can come to nobody in the household of faith if they hold their testimony. Don't ever let the devil take your testimony. And don't let nobody else steal your testimony. Amen. Don't let nobody else steal your joy. Amen. Amen. They are not qualified to make you unhappy. Yeah. I am not prophet. Preach. Preach prophet. Y'all catch that part? Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Can make me unhappy. Loose here. 
In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't make me shout all the way more. Thank you, Jesus. Let's learn how to trust in God and be sincere. And like I told you this morning, this book, brothers and sisters, is real. Every facet of this book, every story in this book is real. And it was put in book form for our learning, our admonition. So whenever we get discouraged, we can run back and see what Esther went through. See what Ruth went through. See what uh, uh, Jeremiah went through. See what Paul went through. And then stand on the promise of God. How many love Jesus? Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Uh, let, let's hear from uh, tonight. Uh, we're going to hear from, uh, well, the hours late, amen, but we still going to hear a few minutes from uh, Evangelist Valentin. He's ready to be praised and give all honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. Give all honor to our pastor, Prophet Bishop H. Walker, to his lovely helpmate, the late Lady Mother Walker, Amen. to all the household of faith, and give honor to whom honor is due. Truly thank the Lord for the blessed word of God that we went forth on tonight from our prophet. Amen. Thank the Lord for the service all day today. Amen. Having a blessed time in the Lord, a good time in the Lord. Amen. And thanking the Lord for the encouraging words that, you know, um, we do trust and believe in God. And if you trust and believe in God, nothing else matters, praise the Lord. Nothing that they're doing on the job. And we know, you know, in the natural, it seems to be um, sometimes overwhelming, sometimes burdened down. But when we put our spirit, we begin to give give it over to Jesus, that, that burden lifts up. Amen. That thing is gone, praise the Lord, because we trust in Jesus. And, and in our life, verse 4 of Psalms 27 it says one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple amen and for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me he shall set me upon a rock amen and that's letting us know that there's nothing that the world or enemy or anybody can do to us because we're um desiring to be with the Lord and, and we're seeking after God and God has a, a blessing for us and like it, um, his daughter had brought out during the testimony service or through the praise and worship amen that blessing on that is not in material sense it's in the spiritual sense where you woke up this morning your children are have health, healthy and happy praise the Lord that you know you got food on your table or you know just God is just blessing in the spirit where you know you can continue to uh, worship him in spirit and the truth that we have a true light a home a true home to come to and worship God and we're not in a false church praise the Lord so I just truly thank the Lord for all he's doing in true light truly thank the Lord for all the many blessings amen and the blessings yet to come God has just been so good to us but we just continue to seek after him continue to worship him praise him and lift him up and magnify him and continue to hold on and stand in the truth Amen. It's a sound doctrine. And I um, thank the Lord for the Sunday school lesson this morning of separation. Praise the Lord. And it was interesting as the elder was um, giving a lesson. Praise the Lord. And I'll say this and sit down. You know, it's interesting because I work with a lot of drug addicts, the parents of the children that are in foster care drug addicts. Some are felons. And you know, if you're on probation, one of the first things they tell you, or when you get out of jail, they tell you not to go back to that same neighborhood. They tell you not to go back to the felons. Or else, you know, you can find yourself, you violating probation or parole, find yourself back in jail. Or with drug addicts, when they go to rehab, um, this one mother, she had seven children. When she went to rehab, they told her it's mandated that first 10 days she can't call home, can't call nobody, you can't call to check on your children. But, you know, they want you to do it for 30 days, but they say the first 10 days is mandatory. Now, that's in the worldly system. What's so difficult about separating yourself unto the Lord? Amen. They do all that, praise the Lord, and they separate themselves and come to the Lord. God will get rid of that drug, uh, that addiction, praise the Lord. God will get rid of, you know, that felony won't mean anything. You can still go forth and get your job, but again, you have to separate yourself. But I thank the Lord that we've chosen to separate ourselves and come into holiness. Amen. And, not, and, you know, again, for the purpose, like they say, not to be influenced by what so-called dominant spirits or people who try to... Um, 
try to, you know, talk or blaspheme against the word of God because we know the truth. Amen. I thank the Lord when I'm out and about and even on my job, people trying to, oh, don't take all, you can, no, I don't want to hear all that. I know what it takes, praise the Lord. You know, they're trying to influence you. You can't influence me. I don't, you know, if you're not willing to hear the word, then bye. Praise the Lord. Let's, you know, like they said, the kids got to say, keep it moving. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I thank the Lord. I keep it moving. No, you, you don't want to hear the word. Oh, I read that scripture. I don't think it mean like that. Bye-bye. You know, I'm, I'm through talking. Praise the Lord. Shake yes. the dust off our feet. But I thank the Lord for the truth of God's word. Again, I thank the Lord for our prophet that stepped out on faith. Amen. And again, like I said, I remember um, being in high school when we first moved over in Kentfield and he had the barbershop and my mother was going up there to get her hair done. He was preaching holiness. That's how we learned of it. Praise the Lord. Or, or the fullness of it. He was preaching holiness. And here we are, 2013, going into 2014, and it's still holiness. So I thank the Lord for the word of God. Thank the Lord for the truth. Thank the Lord for all he's doing. Truly thank the Lord for blessing us with the prophet. Amen. Many of us was in false church. I was, um, as a little kid, it, didn't know any difference was that great of grace then as I got older and decided I'm going to go back to church at Solomon's Temple but I didn't find the truth there I thank the Lord it wasn't until I humbled myself and went right on up there at 7 Mile and Pearson or Patton uh, Braille, praise the Lord, right up there, seven long Braille, where I said, you know, and that's when my life was changed, praise the Lord, and I haven't looked back, so I thank the Lord for it, thank the Lord for all he's doing, and just continue to stand and be encouraged and stand on the word of God, again, we're not, we can't, the devil can't teach us, we can teach them, praise the Lord, and if they don't want to hear it, we keep on, like I said, keep it moving, praise the Lord, but I thank the Lord again for all he's doing, and pray my strength yeah. in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, man, just for uh, those remarks. Yeah. Amen. Uh, she says something that uh, I've been trying to impart to y'all. She said, we are here to teach them. They are not here to teach us. If, 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 if they don't want to hear what we have to say, amen. Do like the Jehovah's Witness do. Have a nice day and go on. <laughs> and they'll disappear quick. You start throwing a Bible scripture at them, and you can back it up by another Bible scripture. They say, have a nice day, and they're gone. Love Talk Radio.